Hi guys, Chris here and you are watching Here We Are Running and welcome back to the channel for another live stream. If you were here yesterday, you'll know that all of this week I am running in races in the Watopia Run Festival on Zwift. And uh, last night we did the 5k race, it seemed to go quite well. And tonight we are doing a half marathon. So it's a bit of a longer stint tonight, guys, and uh, not so fast, uh, taking it relatively easy. Uh, but we probably will speed up, you know the way it goes. Anyway, um, thanks for joining. I see we've got a few people in already. So swishing the life. Uh, afternoon for you, good afternoon. Chris, that running guy, he's on. We've got Ben on. We've got Dan Runs on. Joe, hello to you. We've got Harry from Jog On with Harry Morgan. And as you notice, guys, I am uh, able to see the chat ahead of me tonight. <laughs> so there will be some interaction, hopefully. Right. So as you can see, we've got just over two minutes to go before we kick off. Oh, nice one, Dan. Thanks very much for that. So we had quite a lot of people running in the race yesterday. Be interesting to see how many people we've got today. Guys, I am assuming that you can hear me and see me absolutely perfectly like yesterday. But if someone could just drop a comment in the chat, just let me know it's all okay technically at the moment. So Chris is asking what time am I planning to run today? I'm probably thinking between 1 hour 45 and two and 1 hour 50, something around there. And also let me know that the sound and vision is good. And Harry's hearing it too, that's great. Right, so Harry's asked, do we have a name for this place yet? So I set, as some of you will know, I set a poll up and there were so many suggestions that I used SurveyMonkey to try and get uh, as many people as uh, responding to it as possible. Turns out that that has a limit on the free version of that. So um, after 45 people responded, it's no longer <laughs> telling me the results. But I do, have a, I do have a view from that on what the popular ones were. And we're off here. Right, speed up a bit. I'm getting left behind here. What's going on? Right. Um, yeah, uh, the popular ones. Yeah, there's a few popular ones. Um, but I haven't made my mind up yet, so I won't go through them now. But I've got to make my mind up soon. But if you haven't voted, don't vote anymore because the uh, survey monkey isn't really giving me any useful information out of it anymore. Hello Claire, thanks for joining. Hydration and nutrition pan, Dan is asking. <laughs> I haven't got one to be honest, Dan. I've had a pint of uh, water a couple of hours ago with my meal and that's it. That should get me through this. But you know what I've done? I've made a schoolboy error here. I haven't turned the fan on, and that is going to be problematic. 
Right. If I fall off, guys, don't laugh. Right, we made it. Fan is on, that's much nicer. So, it, this is interesting. We seem to have already, in the early stages, quite a few, obviously, faster runners there. Zooming off quite some distance ahead of me. A bit of a gap already. Looks like I'm heading up the second pack at the moment in eighth place. And yeah, only 15 people running tonight. I guess that's because it's a longer distance one. So yeah, in terms of hydration and nutrition, I, I don't think I need anything. Um, having been well hydrated through the day today. Oh, Ben, thanks very much. <laughs> You'll have to beat him next time. Right, so guys, if you've got any questions for me, I know that last night some of you were probably putting some stuff in the chat and uh, I wasn't able to see it. So um, I didn't obviously respond to those. And whilst I said I was gonna read all the chats afterwards, I didn't select the option that saved the, the chat. So the, the replay um, didn't come up with any chat. So sorry about that, but We've got a, a long uh, run ahead of us here. So any, any questions you've got, any comments you want to make, uh, running related, largely. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, drop them in the chat and uh, I will do my best to answer them. Hi, Kim, all the way from Denmark. Good to have you on board. <laughs> Joe, that is absolutely fine. And eating gingerbread sounds sounds a great thing. Tea or coffee, right. Question from Ben, tea or coffee? Okay. I have tea in the morning with my breakfast and I have a tea after lunch and I probably have two coffees in the morning as well. That's a normal day. On a race day, I would start the day with a coffee. And uh, most of you that follow my videos, you probably know the coffee I use, Sports Barista, which is a higher, higher caffeine, high caffeinated coffee, ideal for sports people. Uh, certainly whenever I've done my faster runs, or faster workouts, I have one of those in the morning before I go out for the run. Right, so Claire is asking, um, in terms of Zwift, do you have to pay? Uh, do you have to pay to enter races? Okay. Uh, running on Swift at the moment, and since it was launched a few years ago, is absolutely free. The cyclists pay, and there is a lot more cyclists that use Zwift than there is runners. They're, if you know any cyclists, they're, uh, they're often in their garages, sheds, whatever, on their bikes, on their turbos. And uh, yeah, I don't know a lot of people that use Zwift, specifically as part of their training. And, uh, but for runners, no, it's absolutely free. And even for the cyclists, you wouldn't pay, I don't believe, to enter particular races or anything. I think you just pay a subscription. It's a subscription model for cycling. Um, so you pay every month. But yeah, running is free, which is good. Could change one day, uh, but hopefully not soon. Um, you don't get any, I don't think you get any specific points for places in the races you do. Uh, 
if you watched yesterday, I was mentioning about the, the points you get which move you up levels. So in the middle of the screen, you will see there occasionally as I get to, you'll probably see it when I get to 1.25 kilometers. It's gonna give me some XP. Those are points they'll add to my total. And that orange bar that moves slowly across, when that gets to the end, I will go from level 12 that I'm on at the moment up to level 13. There you go, plus 10 XP. So those are the points. Um, in terms of the leaderboard, there will be a leaderboard published at the end of the race. So you'll see where you finished, you'll see your times, and there is a Zwift companion app that you can go into afterwards and, and view that information as well. Uh, but this is, a, although this is a run festival, each race is individual. So some people will be doing a few, like I am. I'm planning to do five different races across the course of this week, one at each distance. And other people will be maybe just taking part in one. That's all fine. Michael giving me a ride on on the screen, thank you. TV guy, AU. I think from your, from that, I think you're Chris. Uh, let me know if you're Chris. I think you are. Um, so, and I think you're from Australia. So thank you for watching Down Under, if that's right. I spent two years living in Australia and working in Australia. Uh, 2001 2000 to 2003, that time frame. Based in Sydney. Enjoyed that a lot. Joe, Christmas tree on the right. Did you see a Christmas tree, did you? As I was running. Okay, Ben's saying the, the, the coffees that I mentioned, Sports Barista, definitely give a, a boost. And uh, evidence was in the chaser race that I did with that running guy. Okay, so Dan is asking, if I could pace at any race in 2021, assuming they're all on, which would you choose? Hmm. Uh, so for anyone that doesn't know, I have done pacing. I've been a pacer at uh, a number of races now. Enjoy that, helping other people achieve their times. Um, I've, I've actually done it only in half marathon distance, but I've also done it at park runs. I've got to say, the last time I did it at the Surrey half marathon was absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed that. It was just before the first lockdown. So well, it was the, the last running race that I've actually done in the real world. So that was good. Um, certainly half marathon distance, I think I would want to pace at and hmm, I'd prefer to pace at a half marathon that I had already previously run one that I was familiar with I think I can you don't have to and I've done it before without any knowledge of the course but having that inside knowledge of the course gives you a little bit extra to help the people that you're trying to encourage to get a certain time so the ones I'm most familiar with are my local ones, Run, Run Rygate, Run Gatwick. Um, so Run Gatwick's actually already been cancelled for next year, but hopefully Run Rygate takes place normally in September timeframe. Hopefully that happens. And yeah, that would be a really good one because I've run that a number of times now. And it's not a straightforward one to run if anyone's done that. Right, Kim is asking, what shoes are you running in tonight? Well, it's a good question actually. Um, normally I have a pair of running shoes that I dedicate just for treadmill running, because that's normally I only do kind of one or two runs on the treadmill a week. 
and the rest are outside. But because I'm doing so many runs on the treadmill, I decided I need to rotate as if I was rotating when I do my outside runs. And um, I'm actually wearing the on, mm, I'm gonna say on cloud flow. I believe that's what they are. Um, I'm normally running the on cloud flyer actually. Those are my go-to treadmill shoe. They, I've had them a few years now and they provide a little bit of stability, not a huge amount. Um, they don't provide huge amounts of cushioning, but on a treadmill, you're obviously getting cushioning off of the treadmill. So they're quite good for this. So the on cloud flow, I've had a lot less time. Um, they're a bit more cushiony. They're actually a neutral running shoe, which I generally would run, um, I'd generally run in a stability shoe. These are neutral and uh, yeah, we're just thinking how we get on with them tonight, to be honest. They're, they're reasonably lightweight, so on a treadmill, I prefer to wear a lighter weight shoe. Okay, uh, so Michael's saying it's $12.99 per month for cyclists to use Zwift. Uh, TV Guy AU. Uh, have you picked up the Brooks Adrenaline 21 yet? I have mine waiting for me to start holidays before I break them in. Right, so, yes I have, <laughs> yes I have. I have got the Brooks Adrenaline 21. Uh, previously I had the 20 and before that I had the 19. And uh, it is a shoe that I really enjoy running in actually. Uh, good, for, very good for uh, easy pace distance, soaking up the distance doing the long runs. So that's where I wear those for. And I am due to do a review of them on the channel soon. I've already done the field before it. I just want to put a bit more distance into them. In fact, last weekend, I ran a half marathon outside in them just to get a longer run done. So as soon as I get a moment, probably not this week, but maybe over the Christmas period, I will do a review of the Brooks Adrenaline 21. And it is Chris, good. And he is from Down Under. Right, Harry's asking me a question. Does Zwift allow for incline change if you have the right setup? So if you're running up a hill on the screen, the treadmill incline will change with this. So, Zwift does not provide that capability out of the box. A little while ago, I think it was by accident, they did give the ability to do that and some people found that their treadmills were auto-inclining. And however, this, was, this seems to have been unintentional and in a later release, they removed that capability for a short period of time, I was able to get that working with mine. I don't actually have a treadmill that connects directly to Zwift. I use an app called Runcline that runs on my phone and that uh, sits between the treadmill, talks Bluetooth with the treadmill, talks Bluetooth to Zwift, and then uh, that's, how my, that's my speed source, basically, for doing uh, my runs. And that seems to work pretty well. And I like the fact that when I change the speed up on the treadmill, it goes straight into Zwift like that. But yeah, I did have that working briefly before they took the functionality away. I think there still is a convoluted kind of workaround to get that working, but I've not really tried it. But more importantly, it did actually become a bit annoying because when my incline changes on my treadmill, it beats. So if you were on, a, if you were on a, a course that had quite a lot of elevation change, either up and down quite regularly, then I found that it was uh, continuously beeping at me, which is a bit annoying. The other thing that happens is that I, um, uh, if I do do a workout and put the incline up, 
it will send that information to Zwift. So Zwift and Strava will know that I've been running at Incline. So Chris, that running guy, is saying that he ran the Surrey Half Marathon this year and went one second over one and a half hours. Ah, that must have been... Well, it's a great time, but that must have been a bit gutting to be one second over. Yes, so uh, Chris, TV guy AU, is uh, pretty much commented exactly what I was describing. Probably a bit more succinctly. <laughs> um, right. Oh, I love that YouTube note. If tomatoes are a fruit, why is a ketchup a jam? <laughs> do, you, do you find running on a treadmill harder than outside? I barely use mine as I'm so slow on it. And when I'm running uh, 10 out of 11 minute, 10 to 11 minute miles, it feels more like eight to nine minute miles. Okay. Um, I, I find it slightly different to running outside. Well, do I find it harder or easier? It's really hard to say. I don't think I find it harder. I find it a much more consistent way of running. So there are there are elements of it um, that you are impacted by environmentally, like how hot it is in here at the moment. And it is quite warm even with the fan on. Um, but generally the environment outside and the elevation changes outside, especially where I live, makes more of a difference. So I would say from that perspective, outside's a bit more difficult, but if you get the environmental conditions right on the treadmill, which I have sometimes, I'm not sure I have tonight, but if you get a nice cool breeze at you and you don't overheat, and probably if you're not talking all the time like I am tonight, it's, uh, you do feel, it, you do get to a more of a rhythm because you're running at a more consistent space. So that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of my review, my view on that I think um, so AJ yeah AJ was in touch on after last night's video told him about run Klein and he's got it working on his treadmill which is a similar model to mine so that's good to know and uh, Chris from Australia he's his Brooks well I'm sorry my Brooks reviews were part of the reason for him going for Brooks for the wider fit. Okay, that's interesting. So he's got the Adrenaline GTS 20 and now the 21. He's got the... Is that Ravina? I don't know how they, how they pronounce that. Ravina 11 um, for faster runs as well. Well, that's good. You're a real Brooks shoe runner. Certainly a, a, one of the, my preferred brands. Hello, Jack. Thanks for joining and thanks for loving the channel. So he's asking, oh, well, actually, let's see what he's saying. When Park Run starts up again, whenever that might be, will you return to Ifield Pond, Mill Pond? Uh, we all loved seeing you there and it would be great to feature in a video. Yeah, I don't see why not. I think I'll be <laughs> glad when, we all will, when uh, Park Run 3 starts. I'll be heading all over the place to take part in different park runs so yeah definitely like to go back to um, that one that was a, a reasonably flat one a little bit twisty turny but certainly reasonably flat good, good fast time there but Catherine's asking what treadmill do I have so I have a GTX fitness sprint 5 um, I bought it or ordered it when the UK went into its first lockdown earlier in the year. Had to wait, I think about six weeks uh, and then got it. Got it really because I thought we could be really, really locked down and not able to get outside. That never really happened here in the UK. Um, but certainly since getting it, since using Swift with it, 
I've really enjoyed using it, running on it, and this forming part of my training. Um, I don't know if I would have got so much value out of it, in fact, if I hadn't got swift, because it's never been, treadmill running up to now has never been something I've really enjoyed that much, but certainly enjoy this. Oh, so Joe, <laughs> hello Joe, he's asked the same question. Um, I don't know if you've asked that before or after I answered it. So it's the G, 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 sorry, JTX Fitness Sprint 5. The only thing I would say about this treadmill is it, as I say, it doesn't connect directly to Swift. You have to use a some other speed source. And as we've been talking about, I use Runclide uh, on my phone to do that. You could use a foot pod. There are some other methods as well. Certain watches do it. Uh, the top speed on this model is 18 kilometers per hour, which when I bought it, I thought, that's, that's fine. I'm never going to need to go faster than that. But I do find that for certain speed workouts and also maybe a sprint at the end of a race, I have gone right up to 18 kilometers per hour. And if I was buying again for me, I would have gone for one that went up to 20 kilometers per hour, which is the next model up, I think, that uh, AJ's got the Sprint 7. I would have gone for that. Uh, of course, you know, you, if you want more speed out of it, more power out of it, if you want that connectivity directly to Swift, you do tend to pay a bit more. This one cost me, I believe, uh, £800. And I know that there is a Noble Pro treadmill that I know some people have, which is £1,000 or maybe just under which does connect directly to Swift. So if I was looking again, knowing what I know now, I would definitely consider that one just for the direct connectivity in Swift. Not having to worry about anything else. But the setup I've got works fine for me. Hi Ed. Okay, Ed is asking, do I own any carbon plated super shoes? If not, are you tempted? So no, I don't own any. And yes, I am tempted. Uh, so for me, I would say, yes, I would like to have some. If I normally ran in neutral shoes, I would have definitely have got some by now, I'm sure. Because I run in stability shoes generally, because I do over pronate, uh, I, I haven't gone for any, but I am considering trying to work out of all of the carbon plate shoes, which ones could I perhaps try? and see you know, which one of them offers more stability over the others and perhaps get a pair just for race day, time trials, that sort of thing. So Jack's asking, when I run on a treadmill, do I get a weird feeling at the end? Uh, not normally. I haven't done a half marathon distance on a treadmill for a while. I've only done maybe one or two of them. And that was probably be the highest distance I've run on the treadmill. So we'll find out after this, but normally 5Ks, 10Ks or between 10K and half marathon distance. No, I suppose it's not anything your body gets used to it. So I can just stop the treadmill, get off and I'm, I just feel normal to be honest. So we've done 5K in 25 minutes, running at five kilometers, five minutes per kilometer pace, or 12 kilometers per hour. Okay, that's good to know, Ed. Ed's also said he overpronates, but has the vapor flies, and finds them fine for race days and time trials. That's good to know. They certainly seem to be a shoe for sort of half marathon, marathon distance type runs that 
that people get quite a lot of benefit from. So Joe's asking what I do for my work, what my what brings in the money. Um, so I work in IT, making sure that systems keep going and answering different quest difficult questions when they don't. Jack's asking what my 5K PB is. Uh, so I ran a sub 25K earlier in the summer on the third attempt. Oh, there's a video for that. Or oh, there's a couple of videos actually. <laughs> Didn't go so well the first time, but uh, got there eventually. Can't remember, so 19, 1940 something, I think. Can't quite remember. So we have had quite a good year running, despite everything else, all the other challenges. I managed to get a 5K PB, as just mentioned got a half marathon PB and got a mile PB as well. Thank you Catherine for the ride on. So we're running on the jungle circuit today for this run. I think I've run on this before. It's quite interesting scenery. So we've only got 15 taking part in this race today, uh, which I guess is why the field has spread out quite a lot. So I'm in seventh place you can see there that the next person up is they're running quite a bit quicker than me they're a minute and a half ahead and the person behind me is actually already running quicker than me so they may well overtake me soon but they're 12 seconds behind at the moment So one of my favorite running YouTubers to watch. And Jack's saying mine and the running channel are the ones that motivate me the most. Okay, that's really good to hear. <laughs> I watch a lot of running YouTube channels and I think it would be really unfair <laughs> to single people out. So <laughs> I'm gonna decline to answer. And the reason is that, you know, some of them are really big. Uh, some of them are you know, corporate, to be honest. Uh, they do it for a business. Um, other ones are smaller, like myself, they do it for a hobby. And, you know, you, you, you expect certain things if uh, you've got a film crew behind you and stuff like that, that you're not gonna get necessarily. I sometimes have a film crew, but it involves members of my family doing it. So, yeah, I, there's a lot of good, running YouTube channels and there's a lot of new ones, plenty that you know are probably good that I haven't really even had a chance to watch much of their content yet just because I think this year particularly there has been a big increase in running but also an increase in running YouTubers to be honest. So there are lots of smaller channels out there and I do try to to watch them, subscribe to them when I can. But um, and there's other channels where, you know, some of my favorite channels and then I'll, I'll just have a period where I don't watch the videos for a while and then they'll publish one and I'll get straight back into it. It all depends. So that was kind of a long answer to not really answering your question. 
Hi, Stephen. Good to have you here. And, and Stephen, thanks for the invite to that meet, meet up. Um, if I'm right, that was Sunday morning, which if things go to plan, I probably can't do because I am intending to run the marathon in the Watopia Run Festival on Saturday afternoon. Hey, Jeremy's here, the Goku runner. So, I've answered this one, Jeremy. You weren't here earlier enough. <laughs> Only joking. It's a JTX Fitness Sprint 5. It's a UK branded treadmill. So, I don't know if you get them over there in the States or not. Certainly appears to be a UK based company. <laughs> Michael saying, yeah, politicians answer. No, <laughs> at the moment they just say that. <laughs> they don't give sensible answers, do they? <laughs> oh, don't want to get me started on that. At least they've let us carry on running. That's all I can say, even if we can't say fire races. So here's a question for you guys. With uh, the holiday season approaching for, I guess, most of us that are probably watching this, are you planning, probably planning a very different holiday season this year to what you would normally do? But how much running are you planning to do during it? Do you have some time off work? Are you planning to do more running, less running? Let's see what everyone's view is of that. Yes, Jeremy, you do, you do get to uh, um, design your own avatar, obviously. There's a number of certain options. You, you know, you can pick things like hair color and other features. And um, I think even height, maybe. Um, and you get to pick your running tops, your shorts, your shoes, socks, etc., hat. For the Watopia Run Festival, everyone taking part in one of those races wears a uh, the same top, so you know when you see another runner, if they're wearing that, then they're taking part in the race. If they're wearing their normal top, then they obviously aren't. Thanks, Stephen, for the ride on. I've never done a Tough Muddier, Jack. Tough Mudder, sorry. I might consider it, but to be honest, I'm just looking back, I'm just looking forward to being able to race some normal road races or trail races at the moment. I don't think that would be very high up my list for next year, certainly. But maybe sometime in the future, if I'm looking for a different sort of challenge. So yeah, that running guy, Chris, he's back to 50 mile weeks. This will be a 50 mile week if I complete all of these races on Zwift this week. This will be a 50 mile week for me. 80 kilometer ish. So Jeremy's hopefully going to be doing some more running over the holiday season. I think you picked up a bit of an injury though, didn't you, Jeremy? Would have set you back a bit. But Jeremy's got some of those super shoes that we were talking about earlier. I think you've got the vapor, and I think you've got the alpha fly. <laughs> Ben's asking when's the first aid station. There's no aid stations on this. And despite this being the winter, today and yesterday have been really warm days. Up to then I was having to put the heat on in my garden office. Uh, I haven't had any heat on today and it is feeling quite warm actually.
Oh, so Michael, it works in retail and doesn't often get much time off around the holiday period, but he's managed to book some, that's good. And he's planning to do running during it, even better. Must be very tough in retail at the moment, I'd imagine. <laughs> Uber eats me some food. <laughs> I don't want it to. I don't, I'm not hungry. I'm just, I'm just hot. <laughs> Ape is catching as a year. We're only 7.3k in. There's a long way to go. Uh, and there's a long way to go this week. So I'm comfortable at this pace for now. And we see how we feel later on, whether we want to speed it up. So Catherine is definitely going to be running through the holiday period and is building up distance for a virtual ultra challenge. Brilliant. Hey Jeremy, thanks very much for that. <laughs> and yeah, January is her quietest month at work. So yeah, that, well that's good because it's often a very long month for everyone, isn't it? So good if you can get some time off and get out there and do the running. So Chris from Australia, I'm planning to do the stride intro to power running plan. Okay, on a treadmill. For anyone that doesn't know, Stride is a foot pod. I think, it's, I think I'm right in saying it's probably the most advanced, the best foot pod you could buy. It, it does connect directly to Zwift, but it measures power. So like cyclists have power as one of their key metrics. Um, Stride measures power as well for running. So he's planned to do a, a plan specifically around that, as well as doing some running outside. Um, but he's not going on the roads and pavements at the moment. Yeah, fans definitely uh, very important. So I have got a fan, you won't be able to see it here. It's down in that corner. And it's on number two of three. Probably could do with going up to three. Alternatively, I could, I don't know, can you see it? You can see it there, you can see behind the microphone. I had to get an aircon unit put in here because I knew if I was going to be using this place in the summer, it's going to get particularly hot and the aircon is going to hopefully help quite a bit there. Oh, ever done a race you didn't enjoy and would not do again? That's a good one, isn't it? I don't think anyone's asked that before. Uh, I'm going to be thinking about that when I come back to you, Catherine. I am struggling for an answer on that one. much easier to answer the ones you've enjoyed the most uh, and that are the most memorable. I'm sure there are some that I've finished and I've gone, well, won't come back and do that. I'm trying to think of ones where they, maybe they completely messed up something. Um,
I'm still thinking. <laughs> right, so Joe is saying, having my long summer holiday now until the end of the year, and we're going into the second lockdown from tomorrow in Germany. Okay. So I hope to do some more miles the next week. So are you gonna be able to run outside during your lockdown in Germany? How's that working? I have heard that the cases are going up there. Well, the, again, they're going up probably everywhere in Europe at the moment, including here in the UK, particularly in the southeast of England where I live. Okay, so Catherine's, after my failure to work out the race that I really disliked, uh, one of my favorite races. So, Brighton Marathon will always be a very memorable race for me, my very first marathon, and lots of good um, atmosphere there. Um, I enjoyed the Edinburgh Marathon as well when I ran that in 2019, although that didn't go according to plan. If you've seen the video, I had a lot of problems there, but finished it. I'd like to go back there and do that again one day, give it a proper go. Um, half marathons, yeah, I, I do like some of the local ones. The uh, Rum Rye Gate, probably a very local one, I like that. Great atmosphere, wins lots of awards. Um, uh, Surrey Half, I've run that twice now, enjoyed that. Um, There'll be others as well. You know, some real standouts. If the if the event organisers really put the effort in, it it's really can make a big difference. So Jack's asking, rank my top three marathons, third to first, and he's considering doing Brighton in 2022. So I've only run two marathons myself and then I did the virtual London Marathon this year that if you saw the video from back when was that October time I think uh, so certainly of the two that I've run I I've got to say I preferred Brighton just because things went a bit wrong in Edinburgh in terms of marathons that I would really love to run and haven't had the opportunity yet London is right up there on top of my list Um, I think someone asked a similar question yesterday and I said that I'd like to one day maybe do a, a European based marathon as well. I did enjoy doing that virtual London marathon though. It was terrible conditions, but the support out there on the course was fantastic. So well worth a watch if you haven't seen that video yet. So yes, Chris from Australia. Yes, yeah, so Germany's going into its second lockdown. We've had our second lockdown here in England. <laughs> as soon as we came out of it, the cases just started to go up again. So I'm not sure how long it will be until our third lockdown, to be honest. How's things in Australia? You're uh, well into your summer now, aren't you? So has that brought the cases down a lot? Or would I rather be running away from a hippo or a rhino? A hippo, I think. Uh, so Stephen's asking, what tier are we? So in the in England, the country has a, a tier system, one, two, and three. Uh, so Stephen's in tier three. We're in tier three here as well. I think most of the country's in tier three at the moment. Some is in tier, sorry, most countries in tier two. Some is in tier three. More going into tier three. When is it, from tonight, midnight? I think it might be. London goes into tier three. So, 
Things are going in the wrong direction again. And, yeah, it's not great. Big problem in schools in my area at the moment. Big, big problem. Hi Susie, thanks for joining. Hi Neil, thank you for joining as well. <laughs> yeah, Battle Bridge. So Battle Bridge is our local running track. You'll have seen it in some of my videos. It's a dirt track. I haven't been on it for quite a while, but yeah, it does get flooded. When I did the virtual London Marathon, I started and finished there and I had to run through a big, big puddle of water right at the start. So yeah, not necessarily the best for quick times. I'm tending to go now a little bit further afield for my faster time trials, etc. to um, Henley Aerodrome, if you know that, Neil. It's up near Caterham. It's a 2.6 to 3 kilometre tarmac loop around an, an old World War One, World War II um, aerodrome that uh, they still keep for, I think a gliding club use it, but most of the time they're not doing anything, so it's just open to the public. Yes, Susie, the course is nice. It's the jungle circuit. Definitely worth uh, running it for an alternative route. Okay, so Catherine's saying the Run Seville Marathon. Not heard of that one before, but she said it's a good course for a PB. Okay, we'll bear that one in mind. And a beautiful city as well. Okay, so in Germany, Joe is saying you can do sports outside during lockdown. So that sounds similar to what we had, the rules we had here but they've got a curfew, okay. Oh, so Susie did the one mile Watopia Run Festival race this morning. And yes, uh, I have seen that before. In the one mile race, everyone is dressed in a dinosaur costume. So I'm doing that on Thursday. So be sure to tune in Thursday, 9 p.m. UK time, or the stream will start five minutes before that. And uh, you'll see me dressed in a dinosaur costume. So Chris in Australia is saying the cases in the community, uh, no transmissions for a good while, that's really good to hear. It certainly seems the, the weather makes a big difference and we're definitely at the wrong time of the year here in Europe. Who's to say my avatar is well coordinated with me? <laughs> That's good. They programmed it right then. Quite often you take part in swift races or runs, maybe the workouts, and you find that the avatar's drifting all over the road. But that hasn't happened at all in this one. So you can see I'm about to overtake somebody but they aren't wearing the Watopia Run Festival tops and they are not taking part in this race. Jeremy's saying Texas is horrible. White House is telling us to shut down, but of course we won't because it's Texas. Uh, better not go too deep into American politics either. <laughs> oh dear.
But hey, 2021 has got to be a better year all round, has it not, guys? Right, Jack's asking, apart from running, what sports do you do, follow? What are your favourites? Okay. I don't do any other sports, but I do follow football. Ever since a kid, I've been a supporter of Nottingham Forest, which is nowhere near where I live now, or have ever lived. But, but as a kid, they were winning European Cups twice in a row. So, most kids in those supported the team that were doing good, and then went on to the next team that were doing good. And I've stuck with them the whole of my life. Which <laughs> means I've had a lot of ups and downs, actually a lot more downs and ups. If anyone wants to look up what the Forest score is, against Sheffield Wednesday at the moment, <laughs> pop it in the chat, let me know. They are doing particularly bad this season. Four from bottom before tonight's game and playing Sheffield Wednesday who are second from bottom. So Ben's off. Thanks for watching, Ben. Ah, uh, Michael, no, not a dinosaur suit in real life. <laughs> I would if I had one, it would be quite funny, but I don't. Jeremy, uh, Swift for running is free. It doesn't cost anything. It costs $12.99 apparently for cyclists, but for runners at the moment and since it was, since they brought running into Zwift, it's been free. It may change in the future, but good time to take advantage of it now really. So all you need really, which is, is a treadmill, which obviously they're not cheap, but you need a treadmill. You need a speed source to connect you to Zwift, of which there are various ways of doing that and then actually running on it is for free. So Jack is telling me Forrester 1-0 up and Carl is a Forest supporter as well, brilliant. Yes, Carl, I think it's one of those signings on paper. It looked like it was going to be a great choice. I don't know what's happened. It all started going wrong when we went into lockdown one, didn't it? Um, Jeremy, so it's late in the evening now. I ate my meal a couple of hours before I went and did this run. So I'm not going to eat anything more when I finish. I'll just grab some water and then I'll be off to bed. Swishing to life is asking what my goal for this race is. Um, so when I started, I said somewhere between one hour 45 and one hour 50. So we're doing five minute per kilometer pace at the moment. And what does that mean? We've got just over 10K to go. So hopefully, yeah, I might dip under one hour 45 if I speed up near the end. Yeah, Chris from Australia, there is a few quirks to it, isn't there? Quite a lot of them feel like they're not difficult things to fix, but they've been like it for a long, long time. Jack, I'm not using any hydration or nutrition on this run. 
Um, because I ate and drank well during the day. I don't feel it's necessary. I'm not going flat out on this. I am talking to you guys, although, as you can see from my heart rate on the screen, I am in zone four. I think that's largely down to the fact that I'm talking a lot and it is quite warm in here. So Joe's saying half time. Was that half time in this race? Or was that half time in the football? <laughs> or was it both? Time here at the moment is approaching 9 p.m. Hi Matt, is, is, that, uh, is that Canada? Have I ever been to Canada? Um, yes, I have. I uh, did. I uh, used to do trips over to Detroit quite frequently with work. And we took a, a weekend up in um, Toronto. But I also did a family, well, yeah, family trip, Toronto. Montreal and Vancouver when I was younger. Very nice, very nice seeing very, very, three very different places within Canada. So Jeremy, are you asking, does Zwift control my treadmill? Uh, no, the treadmill is sending the speed information to Zwift via an app that I run on my phone called Runcline. What is my goal for subscribers by the end of 2020? I don't really have one to be honest, and we're getting quite close then. Um, it was great to go over 3,000 subscribers recently, and it's just good. So there you go. Um, I have just move from level 12 up to level 13. And as a result, you can see I'm unlocking some kits that I'll be able to select. And you get certain different kits that you can wear when you go through the different levels. It's just good that people enjoy watching the videos and, uh, and when they do, they subscribe. And more importantly, that if they subscribe, they actually watch the videos and enjoy watching them. So in my race half time, okay. <laughs> Hi Charlie, right. So Charlie's asking, how do I rate Swift as a platform? I don't really have anything to compare it against. I don't believe there's anything quite like it for runners. There are some other platforms that uh, cyclists use, although I think Swift is the bit largest. Uh, there is another app that my another platform that my treadmill will connect directly to. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's with K, Kino something, I think. But that one, you basically people submit videos, and I think you run. You know, you see their videos, and you kind of run within that it's not it's not really the same and also for that I think you have to pay for a subscription so I think I might have tried it briefly but so I quite I like this I like this as a platform as Chris from Australia said they could do with fixing some of the bugs but if they do that then yeah it'd be really good and I think if more people use it there's more pressure on them really then to to sort of fix those things Jeremy saying 10,000 subs by, what, by the end of 2021? <laughs> That'd be good. 
So Jeremy got a trial subscription to Peloton and forgot to cancel it. <laughs> so that's the way they do it. That's why they give you the trials. I've done that with plenty of things. Nothing's for free. Neil's going to go and try out at Friendly Aerodrome. I think uh, in terms of does it avoid injury, it gives you a it gives you a different sort of surface to run on. It's a more cushioned surface, you know, you've got some suspension there on the treadmill. Um, it's like anything though. Do you, if you're running too much, you're doing too much speed work, that's gonna put you at a higher risk of injury. If you don't listen to your body, then again, that's gonna put you at a higher risk. So, I think it's good as part of your training. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to use all the time, but certainly to go alongside the rest of the training I do, I think it's great. Right, I'm going to attempt to put the fan up to a full whack. And next time I do a longer run on here, I need to have the remote control for the aircon. So I can put that on as well. I don't wear contacts, Jeremy. Uh, I wear glasses for reading, computer work, close-up stuff. My longer distance is fine, but if I took this off now, I would struggle to read some of the, some of the text on the screen, hence why I'm wearing them. If I'm running in the outside world, I don't wear glasses at all. Yes, that heart rate reading is correct, Claire. I'm wearing a heart rate strap. I've got quite a high degree confidence in that. So I am running in zone four. It feels like zone four. And I think it's probably higher than this pace would generally be for me if I was running outside, maybe a little bit, because it is, as I keep mentioning, it's quite warm in it. You can also see my cadence there, 164, it's saying steps per minute at the moment. Uh, that's going to be less reliable. But yes, Jeremy, definitely very 2020.
<laughs> yeah, I'll do the effort, you just watch. <laughs> So it looks like we've got about 26 people watching at the moment, so thanks very much everyone for tuning in again. And if it's your first time tuning in for the live stream this week, then we are running again on uh, Wednesday tomorrow. That'll be again, I think, same starting time as tonight for a 10k. And then on Thursday, an hour later, that's just a one mile. Friday, I'm gonna rest. And Saturday, if I'm able to, I'm gonna try and run my first marathon on Swift. Thanks for showing me, yep. Hit the like button if you haven't already. My mile PB was set recently, so I should remember it just like that, shouldn't I? It's five minutes. I'm gonna say 38, but if you look back a few videos on the channel, you'll see the video for it. It's not very long, and you could probably find that I've just told you the wrong information, but it's five something, I think 538 comes to mind. Okay, question for you guys watching. Are you watching right now? Are you watching on your phone? Are you watching on your computer? A tablet? Or a smart TV? I, I, I don't feel like doing a triathlon, Jeremy. Not proper one. If you remember, I did the triathlon relay as part of a team where I did the running side. I haven't got a decent bike and I'm no good at swimming. So Michael's on an iPad. Catherine's on the iPad too. iPads are quite popular here. Tablets, him on a PC. Catherine, I think the longest I have done is half marathon distance. Maybe slightly over, but I think it probably was half marathon. And I do think it will last for a marathon. But we'll find out, won't we? I think the distance on the treadmill can go up to 99.9 kilometers. Whether it goes and swings round to zero after that or not, I don't know. I probably won't find out either smartphone. This runner loves purple, hello to you. Look, watching on a laptop, great stuff. Yes, Neil Marathon. It's not a definite. We'll see how we are by the end of the week. Jack is on a Mac. Ah, uh, okay, so Chris, that running guy says it was 5.48, okay. I was being a bit optimistic at 5.38, wouldn't I? Yeah, 5.48 sounds better. Charlie's asking, would I do a subscriber meetup run next year, whenever the COVID restrictions are lifted? I'd love to do that. And maybe do something on Zwift as well, if there's enough people that follow the channel that are also into Zwift, we could, we could do a meetup on Zwift as well. But yeah, when restrictions permit, a meetup in the real world would be great. Yeah, Catherine, <laughs> we'll see, hopefully. Neil's watching on a smartphone as well.
Thank you. I wouldn't say I'm the king, but if it, if it offers some motivation, if it offers some entertainment, I like doing it. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Subscribe or chase a race. Yeah, Catherine would like the Swift meetup. We'll definitely have to sort that out. So we've got Ben asking out of 10, what's my effort level at the moment? I would say it's higher than it should be. Probably about an eight, I would say. Because it feels harder than this should feel at this pace for this distance. And my feet in these shoes are starting to ache a little bit. So we may, we may bring the pace down a bit. So we get to 15K and then I think I'm gonna ease off the pace slightly. We might speed up again near the end, but as I say, listen to your body. You can see my heart rate is quite high there at the moment. And I'm feeling a bit of, a bit of that achy feeling in the forefoot area of both feet. As I say, this is not a shoe that I generally run on the treadmill with. Thought it would be fine, but maybe that's having an impact. Yeah, it is creeping up. I don't want to max out the heart rate on this run. I'm not out of breath, but it is harder running and talking like this and running in quite a warm environment like this. Lessons learned for the later run to sweep. Stick the aircon on. Wrong way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I haven't looked at the electric bill yet. We got a smart reader about a month ago. I should be looking at it. Right, I'm gonna grab the aircon remote. <laughs> That's why it's hot, the heating's on.
Yeah, clear. I didn't bring any drink with me. Again, probably not a wise decision. Remember that for another one. <laughs> yeah. Schoolboy errors. This is feeling a little bit more comfortable, even though the heart rate's not really dropped much yet. It is feeling more comfortable now. So if you notice, the person behind me is now running a minute per kilometer quicker than me. So we would expect them to overtake me before the end. Just under six kilometers to go. I don't think the uh, aircon did that, Chris. I think, I think um, me just dropping the pace by uh, down to 11 kilometers per hour pace rather than 12 has had the biggest impact. But yeah, hopefully the aircon at least will cool the room down a little bit. And the fan is on number three setting, which is the maximum. Uh, Catherine, I think it's around 184. Jeremy, uh, if you look in the description of the video, you'll see the links to the music that are in this playlist. <laughs> Michael, I think I'm saving my body and my legs particularly for the later runs this week. We'll stick at this pace. In fact, we may even decrease it depending on how we feel, but this is feeling much more comfortable. Although the heart rate is still in zone four there. Neil, I don't have the healthiest of diets. I just make sure it's a reasonably balanced diet. And then as I say, lots of exercise. Yep, Joe, heart from the go. Thank you for the encouragement. Yeah, and the heart rate is looking a bit better.
So I was aiming for between one hour 45 and one hour 50. I think that's where we'll end up, which is fine for this evening. It gives me a, a bit of a view of what I should be doing in the marathon on Saturday if I get that far. Certainly not this sort of speed, that's for sure. Thanks, Benny. Yeah, feeling okay. Quite warm in here though, so put the aircon on, put the fan on, Max. Could have opened the door, but to be honest, it's quite late in the evening here. I don't want to annoy the neighbors. <laughs> don't think you'll be thanking me when you see your bank balance <laughs> but yeah no it's a great thing to do and I'm glad it has opened it up to treadmill running up to someone maybe that hadn't thought about it before Thanks, Catherine. So, Jeremy, what's my favorite thing about being a YouTube runner? So, I love the creative process. I love making the videos. Certainly, filming my runs and sharing it with you lot helps to motivate me, so I love that it can do that. And I love it when people provide comments to videos saying that it's really motivated them or offered them some form of value whether that be encouragement in their running, whether it be they got some value from one of my reviews. That's all great to hear. Oh, look at this, guys. A, uh, a bridge over rather a <laughs> long drop down there. That is very true, Kim. Um, both my wife and I had gym membership, which we frozen, but will cancel probably. And we've worked out how much we would have spent on that since buying this. And it pretty much has paid off itself. Certainly by next year, it will have. Thanks for checking back in, Dan. We're at 17 kilometers now. Only four and a bit to go. And there we go, someone overtaking me.
the Neil's saying, has it helped being live and made the time go quickly or been a distraction? I think it has helped. Chatting to you guys is something different to just looking at the screen and running, especially in a race where there aren't that many runners. Um, but I definitely think the conditions in here tonight have not helped me. I both having to talk and it being very hot in here. So I will have to think, give that some thought. I think for what I'm attempting to do on Saturday with the marathon, that will be in the afternoon UK time. So uh, I can cool the room down more to begin with and I can leave the door open as well if need be. Or it might well be colder. It's, as I said, it's quite mild out there for the time of the year at the moment. Thanks, Marius. Oh, Jeremy's asking, what is the one thing I wish I had done to grow my channel earlier? Uh, so I would like to hope that the videos, the quality of the videos I make now are better than the ones I did when I start. I know they are, but hopefully everyone else finds it like that. And I guess that all comes down to practice. It comes down to trying to be creative, try new things, learn, not copy others, but learn from others and apply that to your creative thinking. So obviously the more time you have to do that, the quicker you can be at producing better content that people are gonna watch. The one thing I've always tried to do is be consistent. I can't, you know, I have a day job. I can't publish videos every day. I know the quality would suffer greatly if I tried to do that. So I go for the one once a week training vlogs, mix in some reviews, and then occasionally try new talent to decide what we're doing this week. Three and a half K to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. I've got a bit of a head wind at the moment, Benny. Fan in front of me, but it does feel quite nice. So as you see, I've reduced the pace, I increased the fan, yet the heart rate is not come down much at all. I'm just really maintaining it at that level. So definitely the right thing to do to reduce pace tonight. Thinking about the week ahead, don't want to wreck it all on the first, second night. Okay, stuck in between two training plans. Uh, so is that after you? Have you done a 10K training plan to do before the 10K time trial? Or are you sticking in the time trial to really be the thing in between your two plans? Um, definitely, I find to motivate myself between two blocks of training, I need to set a challenge. So that's what this week's about, a different sort of challenge. Um, before I really kickstart 10k training, which will be in January. Yeah, Dan, you'll now know why I don't do any nighttime running anymore outside. I just come in here and do it on air. Thank you, Michael, for the football update. Any idea how many minutes to go? Forrest do have a habit of letting in late goals. Thanks, AJ. All right, Chris from Australia, Swiftcast. Is that a podcast type thing? I'm not familiar with that myself, but yeah, I can imagine it's much more 
about cycling, which wouldn't really interest me. Three K to go. Got seven people ahead of us, nine behind us. I imagine we'll finish in this position. Susie's back. I guess it's good if you're into cycling then, but uh, yeah, not me. <laughs> the good old days, Benny. <laughs> Hi Susie, yeah I think so, yeah whilst you're on your business call I have slowed down your notice from the heart rate data there. I was struggling a little bit to maintain the pace I was running at, so we've dropped down twice. Now at a more comfortable pace, maintaining the heart rate now. Should stay at this pace to the end I think. It's the heat in here and probably that I'm not used to talking so much whilst running that's having an impact. Okay, Michael, so getting close to the end of the game. That game should finish before I finish this. 2-0. Yes. Surely can't throw a 2-0 lead away in the last few minutes. Oh, brilliant. So grab them. Some people are not going to know what we're talking about here. But Grabham was our main striker last season. He hasn't had a great season this year so far. He's been out injured for a while. Obviously back on playing today. And uh, hopefully netted our winner. Two and a half K to go. Yes, I am going to do a review on the Brooks Trend and GTS 21s. Um, we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of the live stream, actually. But yeah, I've done, I ran a half marathon in them last weekend. So I've done enough distance and the right time to, type to run now to do a proper review. Probably when I get some time off work next week, I will uh, put that video together. I've, I'm Tom, I'm afraid I've no experience of shin splints, but if anyone else has that's watching now, maybe there's some advice there for Tom. I would have thought, like any injury, it's all about rest. But as I said, I've never suffered from them myself.
final couple of kilometers. I'm not gonna lie, I will be glad to see the finishing line tonight. Thank you, Stephen. Not far to go now. So last night we finished strong, tonight we're just going to finish. And that's the way it goes sometimes, guys. Thanks, Kim. Twenty-eight people watching, I believe. Thanks for staying to the end. Thank you, Benny. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Neil. Almost caffeine, yep. Thanks, Bo. This is one of those runs <laughs> where it's uh, simply taking a while to get to the finish. I don't think we're going to speed up tonight. Marius, I think, if we're going to stick at this. If this was the last run of the week, then yeah, but it's only the second. Thanks, David. Oh, well done, Sai. Thanks, Evelyn.
is it full time in the football? Thanks, Michael. Okay, one kilometer to go. Staying at this speed. Oh, Ben, sorry to hear about that. It's going to be close, isn't it? To 150.
Hope you're finishing the hind. One forty nine forty by my reckoning. Thank you everyone. Well there we go. As I say, harder than it should have been, but still we got it done. And we're definitely gonna appreciate the rest this evening, tonight. We'll go again tomorrow evening, hopefully. We've learned quite a lot from that tonight. Right guys, amazing. Thank you once again for all sticking with it, watching it. If you had to go away and do something and then came back, really appreciate it. Hope I was able to answer your questions. Again, if you want to come back tomorrow night, that'd be fantastic to have you. And Keep those questions coming for now guys though, good night.